I am often asked, how is Spiritism doing in English? And that is a very interesting question that we often get from many of our friends throughout the world that are curious to know how is Spiritism faring in the English-speaking world. And as most people who are somewhat familiar with Spiritism might know, Spiritism started in France and nowadays the bulk of its movement comes from Brazil. So whenever we see Spiritist efforts in English, uh, we also get very excited about the possibility of broadening our community in our reach in general. So I often get that question and I think it's a really great one because I see more and more that Spiritism is really advancing in the English-speaking world. We have Spiritist movements in different countries such as the United States, we have Canada, we have obviously the United Kingdom, we have Ireland as well, we also have Australia and some other countries coming online as well, which makes it really interesting because I often think that when we speak uh, a different language, different approaches and different thoughts come to mind. And I think English lends itself very well to Spiritism because it, it is very succinct and it, and it brings us back to the uh, history of Spiritism, to the DNA of Spiritism in many different ways. So what do I mean by that? I do think that those who are coming into contact with Spiritism today in English are blessed in a specific way because the, the English-speaking world has a very incisive and a very direct and objective way of thinking about things which really suits Spiritism. Uh, spiritism started as a journey of discovery in France where Kardec was really trying to understand what was happening around him and, and that scientific aspect of Spiritism lends itself very well to our modern, contemporary and scientific-minded uh, thinking process. So as we see more and more people coming in contact with Spiritism in English, we uh, find them to be delighted by the rational approach that Spiritism can bring and the light that it can shed on age-old questions such as where do we come from? Uh, you know, where are we going to? Is there a creator? Is there a God? And I think that the, the very um, uh, inquiry-led or inquiry-minded approach that I personally feel uh, in the English language, uh, it's a perfect marriage to the, to the purpose of Spiritism. Uh, of course, Spiritism is not yet as well known in the United States and abroad as it is in other countries of Latin language such as uh, Brazil uh, and even France for that matter and, and the rest of South America and Portugal and Spain. Uh, but I think that is slowly growing as well. And I am really uh, encouraged to see that. Uh, nevertheless, I still think that there is a lot of potential for Spiritism to uh, really take hold in English-speaking countries, uh, especially as we are led to the foundations of Spiritism again and this investigation about the world and for the world of, of uh, spiritual phenomena and mediumship, which is a topic that more and more comes into uh, the mainstream media, for instance. People are more and more uh, desirous of trying to understand if that's a possibility, if that happens and how that happens. And because Spiritism has done so much research and has so much history with these particular topics, if it's really a marriage made in heaven there. So I think that the, the, uh, the, the reach of Spiritism in English-speaking countries is going to grow over time because the mindset behind Spiritism, that of questions and answers, that of constantly looking to understand the world around us and change our perspective as we unveil new facts and new knowledge is one that matches the English-speaking culture in general. So I'm really excited about that. And I find that, for instance, um, when we are talking about Spiritism in English, uh, uh, we are led to these kinds of questionings uh, that are only natural. I myself, when I, when I talk about Spiritism in English, it almost always has a different flavor than when I do so in a different language. So I find it fascinating that we also have this, uh, this kind of adaptation that happens with people and languages and cultures. Uh, but it's a beautiful thing to see that Spiritism cuts across all these different languages and all these different cultures. 
that it is something that is uh, transferable to any place and time and geography for that matter and people and ethnicity. It's a really a body of knowledge that encompasses uh, philosophy, uh, science, and an ethical component that we oftentimes call a religious component in that sense. Uh, and it's really wonderful to see that uh, because of this mindset, because of this process, because of this new body of knowledge that uh, is really young, about 160 years of age, we have been able to look at the world in a very different way and begin to understand that the physical world around us is a beautiful world, but it's nonetheless not our primary world, that we are first spirits, that we develop over time, that there is such a, st a thing as reincarnation and as more and more scientific research validates, and that we come back as many times as it takes for us to evolve and grow spiritually, which ultimately is our goal, to be closer to the Creator in that sense. Uh, so I am very uh, optimistic about uh, the continued growth of spiritism in English. As a matter of fact, we have recently started a nonprofit called the Spiritist Institute to advance spiritism in the English-speaking world. And one of our hopes is to actually bring people together from different countries that speak English to have this common experience and to swap information. Right, uh, Folks from Australia, from Canada, from Ireland, from the United States, uh, where I live as well, uh, are really coming together and seeking more information. They, they want to know how can we explain the world as it is today. Uh, and it's, a, it's something that Spiritism does address. So I'm very excited for what uh, Spiritism has to offer for us, uh, specifically over the next 20 years or so, as I think more and more we will feel this natural need that seems to be bubbling everywhere of uh, marrying uh, you know, our spiritual thinking with a scientific one. Uh, for some reason, over the centuries, we feel like there's a, two separate things, right? That, that we cannot have spirituality and we cannot have science together. And as a matter of fact, I don't see how they can be separate. Uh, because one has to guide the other, right? Science has to be guided by a purpose. And, uh, you know, the contact with the spiritual world, uh, spirituality or religion, whatever you may want to call it, has to be based on facts and information that really show us that that which we are believing is true is eventually true. Uh, so I'm excited about this conjoining of things that it's bound to happen. I think that humanity is more moving more and more in that direction. We have a lot more interdisciplinary studies. We have a lot of more interest um, and we are breaking religious barriers as well. More and more people are understanding that organized religion uh, it's not really often uh, suiting all our needs and they're searching for something else. So I'm really excited that spiritism can bridge that gap between science and traditional organized religion and philosophy, bringing it all together to ultimately uh, address these perennial questions that have always been there for, for all of us about, you know, where do we come from? What are we? Who are we? And where are we going?